the wife of Deacon Elsner Kelsey Sr., the owner of Mrs. Roxy's Precious, Precious Hearts, and the mother of Deacon Elsner Kelsey Jr., Pastor Latasha Kelsey, Kobe Kelsey, Pastor Jeremy Kelsey, Jason Kelsey, and Bridget Kelsey, better known as the Mighty Kelsey Six. Come on up, Sister uh, Kelsey. I am so honored to have with us and come into our couch next, Sister, let me give She is the mother of Julia, Eric, Alicia, Raymond, and Faison. We have none other than our mother, Sister Annie Sewell. I believe it's stuff that will help us for the next generation and our millennial generation. I believe it's going to touch every area, and I believe they're going to be a blessing. Ladies, are you ready? Uh, ladies, are you ready? Amen. Amen. This is going to be good. All right, so we're going to start with Sister Mother Mays, the prayer warrior herself. Mother Mays, amen. Uh, so like I first stated, she is the mother of our very own Sister Teresa Driver. And Sister Driver is really quiet. But I believe we're going to be able to get some stories this morning about <laughs> Sister Driver. Mother May, tell us something good about Sister Driver when you were raising her. Something. What well, don't have to be good. It's just something you can uh, share with us. <laughs> um, she, was, she was an obedient child. And she just didn't, she would always do what I tell her, but every once in a while she would kind of get out of order. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like she didn't like whooping, so therefore whenever she did anything, she thought she was supposed to get a whooping. She was always good, you know, do things right. But this particular time, they, they was doing something, my daughters was, and with some old girls, and um, I said, I'm going to ask you really. So I went to um, talk to them about it, and so I told I said, y'all going to get a spanking on okay? Teresa decided she wasn't going to get no spanking. <laughs> she was going to run. <laughs> she, she started running. I said, come back, Teresa. She kept running. I run a little bit and try to catch up with her. Almost, when I get almost to where she was, she would take off the bed and run. And she ran to a, a whole length like a street from here to, I don't know, it was like a street on the back of she, she ran the whole street all the way down to the end. And so Sister Driver, you're a runner, right? No, she, she was getting out of the way. But then when I called her, I told her, she said, Mama, I didn't do it. I said, but you was with me, right. and you shouldn't have been with me. I told her, there were certain people that I allowed them to pray, to play with. And she was with them, but she was in the wrong, in the wrong crowd. So when I did catch her, oh my God. <laughs> we, we went back to the house, and we didn't go back the way we came. <laughs> Uh, and I know I will never forget that she would always, uh, she didn't thought she was supposed to get no book because she would always do what I would tell her to do most of the time. She always been quiet, but um, she will open up and she can talk. Yes. Yes. get her wound up, she, she can talk so. Yes, the driver has been a true blessing to us. She has taught in our marriage ministry. Yes. Amen. <laughs> So when we see Sister Driver take y'all running, we know they sent her from, uh, <laughs> from growing up, amen. So 
As we support stated in your introduction, tell us a little bit about Lifeline Prayer Ministry. How was that birth? Um, it was birthed out of a, a prayer line that I have. And I've been doing this prayer line since 1999. Wow. And we open up every morning at 4.30 a.m. until 6. Wow. And uh, God just gave me a vision of prayer warriors coming together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just, I mean, it just kept being in my heart to do this. And I just was seeing women, men and women of faith and of God praying all over this nation. Mm -hmm. And seeing this nation change as a whole. And uh, I began, uh, the first year, it was the ninth, and it was in 2015, the first prayer retreat. And uh, it was awesome. God moved, people were healed and delivered. One lady had her ear hair restored. And, and it was so awesome. So I said, well, I'm going on. Then the next year, I said, well, I, I said, Lord, I'm just, I don't know about this. And you didn't release me. Like he didn't release me from the prayer line because I wanted to stop. But we know we can't stop on right. God. That's right. There's no stopping. If he called us to this intercessory prayer, that's what we're supposed to do. We are to cry for a nation. So it started from the prayer line. And this past year was the fourth year of the prayer line retreat. And um, I was so excited about it. And I'm still excited. And every year I said, well, I don't know about next year, but I always plan before I leave the retreat, this person, I want this person here, this person. I always plan, but I'm always saying, this might be the last year. And my children tease me all the time. Mom, you're already planning for next year. You're but it's something that God gave me, and it's in my heart. And I, I will not stop until I see this nation come together in prayer. I want to see a praying nation because I know what prayer can do. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes atmospheres. Prayer changes your home. It'll change your children. Change your marriage. Prayer works. Prayer works. I said we are a marching army of intercessors. But we only march on our knees to victory. And this is how we do our fighting. Not with the the weapons that the world fight with, but we fight with, with weapons of prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer, praise, and worship. These are three things that God has given us, and these are powerful weapons. If you put them together, they work every time. Amen. Amen. Well, you said something key. We have, um, this generation, we have some youth here. Can you speak to those who may feel the pull or the tug of being an intercessor? Can you speak to that? Yes, I would say to the ones that feel that they are called for intercession. First of all, I believe that everyone that's every born again believer is called to prayer. Yes. I believe that. But uh, if you're called to intercessor, intercessor is a prayer, it's a type of prayer that you forget about your needs right. and you intercede and stand in the gap for other people. Yes. Yes. And this is what an intercessor do. And we cry to God for other people. So I would say, if you feel the call of intercessors, intercessory prayer, do it. Because God is seeking and searching for those that would come together, <clears throat> excuse me, and pray. Sometimes we pray at midnight. Um, you can, people can call you if you're an intercessor. They can call you any time of night. You don't get frustrated. You know that's your call on your life. So you wake up and you begin to pray. I've had people call me 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't do nothing but wake up, I pray, and I go back to sleep. Because God just put right me on back to sleep. But I do what he called me. So if, it, if God has called you to this ministry, to intercessory ministry, do it and do it with your whole heart. And I want to say one more thing. That if you are called to that, pray the word of God. The word of God works every time. That's right. That's right. He said you put prayer and the word together, it works because God will honor his word. Uh, sometimes people pray about things that doesn't, you know, it just, just don't make sense sometimes. But if we use the word of God and we declare the word, he said, give him his word to him. Hallelujah. So if we pray his word, then it will work, the prayer will work every time. And I would say, do it. God is calling intercessors. He calling intercessors from all over this nation. Because there's a time, it's a time now 
that people need to pray. Yes. If we don't pray, we are not going to make it. Yes. Hallelujah. We got to pray. Prayer is not an option. It's a necessity. Yes. Right. It's necessary yes. for us to pray. It's not an option. It's not something we do when we just have a problem or something we need to go to God who gets sick and we cry out. But it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle. Yes. So do it with your whole heart. Read your word, study your word, get it down in you, and pray the word back to your father, and he will hear you, and he will answer prayer. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. So, like we said, Sister Driver, she is mighty. Sister Driver's mighty. She's quiet, but she's mighty. What are some things that you have instilled in your kids about prayer? What did you try to teach them growing up? Oh, well, first of all, I haven't been saved all my life. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But I praise God that he called me out for such a time as this. Yes. And uh, my children, they was, uh, my, my husband always, he would, he just left the discipline to me. He didn't, he, he had girls and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't want her. Just he just didn't want to whoop him, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he would put it all on me. And uh, But uh, just to instill uh, good values, you know, taught, taught them that they should love one another, that they should be obedient and obey uh, the ones that have authority over you. If you got um, your mother and father, obey your mother and father. The Bible said your days will be long on this right. earth. So I taught them the best of my knowledge how to be obedient and how to obey and how to love God. <coughs> but um, I taught them most of all, I guess, to know to go to God for themselves. We teach them how to pray. We, we, you know, not to show them so much so. You, you can show them because of your lifestyle. Right. The parents, the, the, the mother, the father praying in the home. But you teach them to pray and to go to God for themselves because one day they might not have the mother and father around and they need, need to know God for themselves. So I think I taught them how to uh, just be obedient children, good moral standards, and that God is able to do everything and all things, whatever their needs was. They could go to him. When I didn't have, they could go to him. And God would do, supply their needs. And he would answer, he would hear and answer prayer. I remember Teresa, thank you, Jesus. When she was going to, um, was it Germany, I think? Germany. And uh, that was before she got saved. And she called me. And she asked me, she said, Mom, she said, Somebody told me that God don't hear a sinner's prayer. She said, well, how do you be saved? How do you get saved? I told, I told her the best that I knew. I said, look, I said, pray if you, if you are sincere in your heart and you have repented, you pray, and God will hear your prayers. And I remember that time in particular because their plan was, something happened and they had to land and I didn't know where they were, didn't know what was happening. But God gave me a peace and uh, I remember that. And I always would just teach them, try to teach them, look, trust God with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and everything that you do and say, and he will direct your path. So I tried to give them that uh, in a prayer, for you know, in the way of prayer that go to God for yourself. But I'm here for you. Uh, I, I'm going to pray for you. I'm praying for you when you're sleeping and when you're not. You know? So we pray all the time for our children. Not only for ours, we pray for some of your children out there. I'm sure. We pray for children all over this nation. And around. So I taught them that prayer was the answer. And God was the most important thing in their life that he was the source of all things, that he could do above and beyond what they could even ask or think. And things that I couldn't give them, or that I couldn't do, but God stand ready to do it for them. Well, we thank you. We thank you, I thank you. I know Emmanuel thanks you for being persistent.
the time that Sister Brown has told us, my mom is praying for you. My mom said, praise the Lord. So we appreciate prayer warriors. We have one, Sister Jancy, that, um, that are consistent with prayer and who will go before the Lord. When we're not even praying, they're going before the Lord for us. And so that is that is a blessing. That is a true blessing for us. So we appreciate you. That's what intercessors do. That's what we do. That's what we, that's what, that's a ministry that he has given the intercessors. You pray when everybody else is sleeping. You pray when when nobody else is awake or whatever. But that's the ministry. And I praise God for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Mason. So next on the couch, we have with us Minister Roxy Kelsey. Amen. She is the mother of our very own Deacon Elsner Kelsey Jr. Amen. So we, I know you have some funny, funny, funny stories, uh, but we want to hear, oh, I think the youth really want to hear about Deacon Kelsey Jr. <laughs> so tell us something about child rearing him with Jr. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. So honest, set up everybody's mothers. But um, to a funny story, so the youth want to hear about Jr. Jr. was a really good child. He really was. Um, but he, and he was a good babysitter, because you know, if he's, if he's the first, he had to do it But uh, Drew was, he was a good child, really. Um, I'm trying to think, you asked that when the mother, I'll give you a story. Uh, Drew really was a really, really good child. Only one thing that I remember him saying, or one of the things, as I said, he kept the other five a lot, not a lot, but when I went out to church, or well, not church, because they all went with me. But anyway, if I had to run into the store, Dream was in charge of the car. But anyway, he told me, Mama, I don't mind keeping any of the rest of the children. He said, but that's Bridget. You know, I said, okay, baby, I'll take it off of you. I'll go, and I'll take Bridget. So that's the only thing I could really, unless he could think of something, so he probably going to say, look, he probably, if I could get something on Junior, I'll give it out a little bit, okay? I just think we got something on Junior. Y'all have something on oh, i tell you one thing, I got something on Junior. No, but you shared it. Either you or Corey one shared it with me. Uh, I, I didn't believe, I've been in church since 75, and, um, I didn't believe I got in church right after I had dreams, so uh, I got pregnant during the dreams and a couple of months after I got in church. But anyway, so he's always been in church and just doing things and we come up real strict. You didn't fight, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And uh, I remember I was so messed up because I didn't know. I came from Baptist and this wholeness was a whole different ballgame. And so I just really didn't know. I was so taught by Junior going to school. I thought about homeschool. And I said, I just got to protect him. I got to protect him. You know, but I finally did let him go to school. And then better yet, we had moved into everywhere. We had to get on the school bus. And this really was. And he knew, not fight, but I don't want to be a punching ball, but don't, don't fight. So anyway, and I probably can't even say this. Come back about it. <laughs> in the church. But anyway, uh, let's just um, sit Fred Sanford, y'all talk about giving Scott. Okay, a little while ago, somebody said about Fred. You know that woman, Esther? <laughs> you know her famous phrase? Okay, and so they said, uh, remember, that's what she said all the time, and so on. Uh, somebody was picking on him, and he come up with that phrase, you all, and you know, and I said, oh. Okay, and it wasn't a curse word, just something we just didn't say. But she said it all the time to Fred. You old. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the other part. Fish yeah. and the other part. <laughs> and so they said, and I said, well, what happened? They said, they left Junior alone. I said, well, good. That let me know he can take care of himself without violence. If you, if you have to move or, or move up from someone or leave, that's good. 
But he did that, and I was really kind of proud of him that he stood up. I didn't want him to run, but if he had to run, run, but I didn't want him to be a punching ball. And I wanted to say that, so when he said that, they said, they left Julia alone. And I thought, yeah, so that's the only I think of right now. He was really a very quiet, he did a good job, he, he really did, but I was proud to know he could protect himself, <laughs> even if it was with words. Huh? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, no, am I forgetting something that Junior did? Am I, did I forget something? What? Come on, help us out. Tell me, baby. Tell, <laughs> Tell me what he did. Or was, or was this between you and him? No, I'm didn't wear red, he just hard. Okay, so I had six kids right. to to raise up under this time, you know. And it wasn't easy, but I remember my mother, I used to play basketball, and I could always find my mother in the audience. She was a great supporter. So I knew, me and her daughter, I was gonna support all six of them. If they ran me, ran me. You know, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to be a mom, because I saw my mother do that. And then I was thinking about how um, one pastor told a bit of his mission, he's deceased now. He said, children are going to be children. Right. Even if they get to Holy Ghost at right. age five, they're going to be kids. Right. I said, and you treat them as kids. And that's what he told me. So I had that locked in my mind because they come with a book with Junior. And I had the other five, it's like two years apart. And all of them said uh, three, four, so in a year. But anyway, so, like I said, this is all new, and I'm trying to do what God said. God has spoke to me yes. and told me, raise them, and I'm paraphrasing the scriptures. I think to him about 1 Timothy, the second chapter, where it talks about the youthful lust and different things. I think it's starting around verse 20, uh, second, yeah, second Timothy, second chapter, verse 20, and raise them meat for the master's use. I didn't even know what that meant, being young in the Lord, this has been a new deal. What does that mean? So I was kind of, you know, I forgot what uh, type of Bible I read it out of. But that's what it meant to raise them, even to raise them for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, raise them when God can use them. So I said, okay, this is something else I put in the back of my mind. In other words, it was a lot to deal with six kids in school. Right. Uh, six different personalities, right. six attitudes. Right. You know, it was just different, but evidently God knew that I could do the job I would now have since then. Right. So I just kind of shifted the load and leaned on God and everything. I asked him everything. First I was trying to get uh, put his information or whatever from others, you know, that's been around. That didn't work. Because they believed in taking away and you can't do this and you can't do that. I didn't think that was the way to go. Right, right. But come to my mind, if I'm taking something away, I need to put something back. Right. You know, because they are kids. And they're going to be kids. And I just couldn't stand that, that thing. So I, I, I wasn't a rebel in church, but I was somewhere different. 
Amen. Being in church long time, yeah, sometimes people are different. I was a different one. Amen. And so uh, I just kind of did. Um, Amen. Me and my husband got together and said, honey, we got six kids here. Ain't no way in the world we're going to make it work doing that. Right. I said, so we had to help choose or help them to uh, direct their attention or something in some day life. Right. Most people, and I guess I could say that, especially the other, they always invest in their child's right. uh, talents or whatever they see. Right. So I began to see different talents in these children. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. Uh, I even tried to get Tasha, uh, took her to a music teacher, her and Jeremy, thinking, you know, that was because they kind of like music. And they said, Mom, I'm not learning nothing. I said, you're not learning, just quit. I saved my money. And so God did that for her. I know, you know, he gave, I thought she was playing at age 12, right. on her own, with her ear. Right. And those that know what time she, she can play it or, yeah. you know, but that came directly from God. So I began to look at them and just see different ones that had different talents because we love singing. <coughs> and saying she could sing good. Jeremy, he was the line that came last because he's a little different. <laughs> he woke me out, but anyway, I hung in that way. <laughs> Jason, I don't know if everybody knows Jason, I know Deacon Monday does. He was an artist, and he drew my mother's picture from a picture I had in my uh, wallet, and he won first prize at the school. They had been the Galton Hines with all them graduated, Bridget graduated from the station camp. And they had them that, uh, you know, they had that boat or uh, whatever. This play, and there was my mama, what Jason had did. I said, okay, so he likes to do that. So we kind of paid and increased in that. That's what he wanted to do. But, uh, so it made, that's the kind of, it wasn't difficult, but it just kept you looking. And you have to watch your kids. Right. Yeah. You have to pick up the nuggets that you see in them. Man. I had six, I none of them like. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bridget being a baby, she's a great, cooker, baker, or whatever, uh, our class is simple, some of it, she's really good, yes. and she really, <laughs> and she really, uh, she's a good singer, you know, but that's not really her, in fact, she gave me a declaration when she went to a freshman for the first time at Gallatin High Mama, I'm not getting in the chorus, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, because she didn't, be a baby, they've already done that, and I'm not, so don't expect me to do that. So this is a declaration I got from her. I said, okay, I said, Miss Smith, number six. I said, I'm gonna let you do your own thing. And so she went over there, went along the middle of the year. She was in chorus, <laughs> like everybody else. But I don't know if she did that just to see was she gonna get a rise in me or not. You know, I said, okay. So she followed suit with the rest of them. But in uh, church, this is my thing. I told them about church. I don't mind what you're doing in school. And you, you could do it. And, and it's right, and I knew some of it wasn't uh, kosher to some of them, but I said, but you love God. You don't put that folk out. You, right. If you mess up, you ain't playing, you ain't singing. Because you got to be right to do any of that. Right. Okay, so here's the biggie. When Junior wanted to play drums, now y'all know, I know in high school, you don't play gospel music on the drums. I knew that. Oh, I had a lot of friction or whatever. You know they know you're playing gospel, you're right. I knew they know you're playing gospel, but I wanted to have, me and my husband, to have been it in his heart so much. Right, right, right. It's just like a postman. You only you know a postman because you got the outfit on. Right. And I said, so when you're at school and you're drumming for Gallatin High, and when you get to church, you're playing. You know what I'm saying? You're giving what you do there, there. And he did a good job of it. Right. And I knew, in fact, he went to governor's school. Right. Musician, you know, he went to governor's school with that. And that's a big honor to get to because he was playing drums. So then I'm going to put this in. God is holding you accountable for raising your children. Amen. Not the pastor, yes. not either. But he's right. going he gonna to call you into judgment. Right. What did you do with this, thus, and other? You didn't raise it. You didn't tell him how to love him. You did. He gonna get you. Right. I used to mean get there thinking he gonna jump on the pastor for my kids. He's not. You're the one that he put in charge of your kids, and we learned that at an early age that we're going to give him account. So if I'm going to give him account, we're gonna do it right. 
you know. And so uh, that's the difference. That, that's how I made it work. It, it's work. Believe you me, it's work. Yes. But it was it's work that God knew that I was suitable for. I didn't know. It, it was new to me that I was able to do and then hit the bed at night. <laughs> you know, just fall out. I had a reason to fall out, you know. And then I saw so I'm going to leave Jer Jeremy last. Jeremy's in the fourth grade and won his fourth, uh, his first vocal, is it for age, vocal award. And so he was in the paper, and so, you know, just always in the paper. And he went to Gallup, uh, he was Rucker Stewart. He was, um, had this dance team, Memphis Pride was the name of it, and he was into that. So how I many of y'all know, I stayed up and down the highways all the time with Jeremy, singing this, winning this, cooking, just on and on. He was a non-stoppable child. And I said, baby, you are wearing your mama out. <laughs> you know, and he just said, well, mama, I got to be here and do something. I got to be here and do something. And by God's grace, he helped us to meet everything that he need to meet. But you have to really get committed to God. I love God. Right. And so even though it made some little waves, but God was going to get me. Right. If I just kept taking and never putting back in, I had six kids, they don't tell what I had in the house. Right. You know, because they've been uh, uproar, they've been unsettled, you know, and everything they did was, was really good. They didn't do nothing. And I had good kids, not perfect. Was well, not perfect. They fought like cats and dogs. But uh, it was not perfect, but it was good to eat. And so they gave me something to work with. God is he's good and ready to be praised. And I do thank God for all six of us. So uh, that's how we made it work. We joked. My husband worked a lot. And so we was at every convention, me driving with my six kids, every council. You know, I kept them involved. In fact, uh, with, um, that's, a, that's a good segue, if I can get this question. Because um, you, I remember when I first came to Zion, you were um, a Sunday school teacher, you were over the children's ministry, you were a secretary, you were over the marriage ministry, you were over the, the uh, parenting ministry as well. So being over all of those different ministries, and I believe you can help some of our mothers, and we have a lot of workers in this church. Uh, the women, the men work, but the women, you know, Shout out to the women. We work. We work. The men work definitely. Don't get me wrong. I love y'all, but this is Mother's Day. Um, but our women, we really, really work. So help us. Help the women. Um, now, unless I ask you, you know, but help the women to discern between sacrificially saying yes and wisely saying no. Now, I'm not saying when I ask you women. I'm saying when other people ask you. <laughs> help us to discern how to sacrifice, uh, sacrificially say yes, when to sacrifice, sacrificially to say yes, and when to uh, wisely say no. Okay. Now, are you speaking when someone asks you or are you talking about your children? Well, I'm talking about when someone asks you. You have so many different, we have responsibilities as mothers. We have responsibilities. We work outside the home. And then we also work in the church. So how do you discern when to sacrificially say, yes, I'm going to do this, and when to wisely say no? More than likely, if someone or something come available and they come to you and say, because that's how some of the things I ended up in, because God had already told me, he had already told me this is going to be a part in this. You know, and so when I was asked, it was like confirmation. Sure, I, I'll do it. So I knew that it was all right because God did all right. God would not put you in a position yeah. or put you somewhere you know nothing. You're the last to know. I don't believe that. I, I don't think I don't think you do anything and you're the last to know. But it's because uh, he, he would tell you or let you know. You know, and a lot of times we used to uh, pray, a lot of people pray, Lord, I want to be busy. I want to work. And that's my coming and ask you something. I don't want you to. You can't pick and choose. But you can be led by God. Yes. If it makes sense here, yes. and you already been thinking about it maybe from a distance and kind of inquiring, I think I might, uh, and not say nothing about between you and God, and that you approach with that, what you like to do, you know, and then you say yes, because that's what you've been thinking about. That's what you want to do. Now, what they do is pick and choose is if somebody approached you or the, op uh, the opportunity came available. You'd already been thinking about it, and you accept it. That's fine. 
and I went to wisely and said, no, uh -huh. it's when you got your hands full. All right, that's good. When you got your hands full, and anybody that's spirit-filled and loving it, they would know, you know, that you have enough. Don't you have to feel guilty and say yes to something you know that you absolutely, I just don't have any more room to, what can I do? I had to cut this short and add this. You know, I doubt would not put no more on you. But you have to learn to use the you know nicely and wisely. Right. And real sweet. Sweet you can make. <laughs> you know, darling. Oh precious. I won't be able to do that at this time. Maybe later. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I had to learn how to do that. I told him, let me see if we read you. When you went to school, the six precious that you you know, you can, uh, uh, you're can unique and you're wise and you're the bottom of it, number six, at which everybody loves. You can say no when I'm feeling guilty. Right. I said that to all the college kids that went to school. That's just a little declaration that I got. I want them to know they're unique, special, and whatever. So when they went to school, I said that. In fact, my granddaughters, all three of my granddaughters got, and grandson, got to have that. They got one, but you could do that and not feel guilty. <coughs> you know, God, and you give God all you got in this particular ministry or whatever they're doing. And he's not going to look at us and say, Well, who are you? You know, and you know you're doing all, you're doing 100% right here. If you don't, somebody's going to miss 100%. It's going to start getting slapped. Well, that's helpful to me. Yes, that is. That's very helpful to me because I know I'm the type of person where. Um, you know, I want to see everybody happy. I want to see everybody pleased. Um, so saying no is kind of hard for me sometimes. Don't take advantage of that. But saying no, you know, it can be it can be hard sometimes. So just knowing when to say no, because we, like I said, when you, I have two kids that are very busy, you know, with sports and things like that. And so just knowing when you're holding too much, yes. and it's okay to say no. And when you're saying no, you're not being mean, or God is not, or you're not. Uh, displeasing God unless he told you to do it. Yeah, but it's okay to say no. So really thank you for you helping me with that. You can say no. When I first got saved, I was supposed to say no to nothing. I'm serious. Wow. When I first got saved, that everything was yes, yes. Am I wrong? Everything was yes, yes, yes. And you got to do from, you know, until you just wear a good person out. Amen. You know, so over the years, I come to learn. I can say because I have obligations. I have a family, six right. children, and I, everything can't be a yes. Mm -hmm. Something is going to have to be a no. Because God holds me up here with me, not you. You see what I'm saying? Not going to be, it's going to be me. If, if anybody come back, and my husband worked, uh, always worked outside the house, so he left the spiritual part with me to make sure they doing what they need to do. Make sure they love God. And that's one of the things. One of your questions you asked, I'm going to answer for him mm -hmm. now. But looking back, of course, one thing you are glad you instilled in your kids that's right. to be God fearing mm -hmm. and to be independent. Mm -hmm. If you feel God, they got made. Mm -hmm. Love God. And I did not love what you said. I wasn't there when any of my kids got the Holy Ghost. I made it a purpose not to be. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to live. Mama's, the mother said she got mother said nothing, mother was not even around. Yeah. I want that child to know right. themselves what they had and what it, what it could do for them, you know, how to activate. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I want them to be God fearing. They feared me somewhat too, and I want them to feel God more. <laughs> I want them to feel God more. I'm an old school mama. They, they did. I struck fear in my kids' heart. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it for purpose, not because I didn't love them. I did because I love them so. That's right. I love them so, That's you know. Right. And so I want them to respect their dad and me at any cost. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, at any cost. And obey me. When I, this is not funny, but it's a story. Some little girl at church had got in touch and ended up in the bathroom mm -hmm. where Junior Word was, and he knows, watch your sisters. Watch him. I don't know if you remember that, brother. Your dad liked to have a fit because I was saved, young saved, so I leave it there. <laughs> young saved. <laughs> and so this girl had gotten junior, not junior, got time to get up in the bathroom. Junior was getting through the crowd, trying to get to what? His sister. Because he knew that he's supposed to watch him. 
protect his sister. Mm -hmm. He fought the crowd and got them here, and he come back and met me. Mom, they wouldn't let me in the bathroom. I said, okay, I'm going to the bathroom. So I went on in the bathroom. He didn't find He did his lid. He couldn't get in the bathroom. If he could have got, if they wasn't in the bathroom, he would have been able to get to her. But he couldn't. And so he made me come and down. Oh, I tried to get in the bathroom. They wouldn't let me in. I said, it's okay. Ain't no problem. So I went in the bathroom. And we'll leave the story right there. And so <laughs> we all get saved. We're still saved. <laughs> A real good, you know, he was going to obey me regardless, you know, so uh, that's the things I stuck in the children. And, and I, they all, as you can see, all of my God fear, even Mr. Uh, Dick Money, buddy Jason, he just slow. He is so slow. Everybody knows he is slow. You know, he's really he moves slow, he talks slow, and he's a good, hard worker, a good person. But he can be, he's a deep king. You never know what he's thinking. Yeah. You know, he's sitting around getting it all together. So stay on the big brother. Yeah. We're about to drive him in. He's, he's doing all right. Now we all will be watching Jason when he comes to church to see how <laughs> slow he is. <laughs> I came to school one time. There's a nice school he went to. And it was raining. And I'm like, I looked at myself. If you don't hurry up, they're going to think you don't know how to get out of the rain. <laughs> I mean, he had to make every step. Just, we just waited. I kind of mind a little bit. He didn't mind. And that's okay. We'll be praying for Brother Jason out of church. We'll be praying for him. Amen. We're going to get to Sister Annie Sue. We're going to get to Sister Annie Sue. This is going to be a treat. Um, how many of us are friends with Sister Annie on Facebook? Amen. If you're not friends with Sister Annie on Facebook, you are missing out on the tree. So y'all, her name is Sister Annie Sue on Facebook. Find her. Annie Sue, S-E-W-E-L-L. -E -L. You have a lot of prayer requests at the church. I hope that's okay. <laughs> but amen. Um, and so her um, post that she posts always bless me. They always, always bless me. And so she believes in affirmations and positive affirmations. So we're going to talk to her about her affirmations. I'm going to read this one. It says, and this is one of her posts that I, I love. It says, my confession of faith that I dwell in, my confession of faith that I dwell in the secret place and I have his protection and provision. God is my refuge, my fortress. I'm not afraid of the snare of the fowler. No evil shall befall me and no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. God has given his angels charge over me and they are bearing me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against the stone, as declared in Psalms 91. So if you can talk to us, Mother Sula, about your affirmations, what birth or what inspired you to write these affirmations? Her Facebook is filled with these affirmations. I'm telling you, they'll bless you. Go back and read them. So what inspired you to write them? Well, one day I was sitting reading this little book on prayer. And I walked, I walked to the book up. I'm reading it so so much. Uh, Prince Lord, first of all. Prince Lord, first of all. And I uh, pages are just <laughs> mixed all up in the book. But that comes from reading. Mm -hmm. And in that, when I posted that, it kind of struck me as this is where I am in God. This is what I have in Him. If I don't have faith, I don't have anything. Right. So I have to trust, rely, and depend on God That's right. each and every day of my life. There was a time that I didn't because I just had got saved. I got saved in 83. And as the years went by, different things happened in your life that you have to have faith in God. Right. Or uh, else you won't make it. Mm -hmm. So when I uh, was reading over that, and I, I thought that, you know, this is, this is heavy, mm -hmm. you know, and this is what it takes to get up every day, six o'clock in the morning, pray, right. seek the Lord, just trusting in Him and believing in that God can do anything but fail. That's right. uh, not a long talker. But, That's fine. Um, well, how do, you, how do you feel like those affirmations can help this generation? If they 
rely on God if they depend and trust in God. Mm -hmm. Always, right. always looking to God and not leaning to your own understanding, right. but having faith in God that He's capable of doing any and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Whatever your desires are, yeah. as long as you have faith, That's right. they will come to pass. That's Those right. things will come to pass because God will bring them to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, Oh, and uh, I'm looking at this, no weapon formed against Michelle Prosper. Okay, um, I, uh, I have diabetes. I've had a heart attack, one kidney removed. But trust in God, That's right. Right. no weapon formed against me, it, it won't prosper because God has hope to me. He has a hope to me. That's right. And he brought me through those things. Mm -hmm. And I, I suffered a little bit, you know, the, the flesh suffers when you go through those things, but my faith was in God that he would bring me out, yes. and he did it, and he's still holding me up right yes. now. Yes. And I give you the call. So, you know, we, we will, in these bodies, we will have things to come against these, this, right. this flesh, you know. But as long as we trust in God and believe that he can do the impossible, and he can, he does it every day. You hear testimonies of, of folk that's testifying how they were near death and God brought them back. You know, this is faith. This is our faith. This is the kind of faith we need to walk in. Not denying, uh, uh, disbelieving that God can't do what he's saying. His word stands true. And if we walk in that word, all these things will come to pass. And I, and I just give God the glory for Amen. the things that he does. I know when my oldest daughter, Julia, was small, she was a smart young lady. And uh, she writes books now. She has a bachelor's and a master's. And she's a minister. And uh, she encourages me. She preaches to me. When I call her, she preaches. She actually ministers to me every, every time we get on the phone. She knows that Bible back and forth. And I'm yet learning, and, and, and I give God praise for her. She's a good child, good child. And uh, even with her, uh, I had to have faith in her that as she was growing up, I had to have faith in God as she was growing up. That was the talking this little baby. I used to have to put her to bed. She talked talk me down. <laughs> and I put her to bed for a nap. And when she back up, she started right back again. <laughs> I didn't know she was gonna turn out to be a, a minister, but I just praise God for her. And um, uh, well, anyway, I just give God praise for her. And uh, so, well, that's that's give Sister Annie a hand, y'all. But she, I told her, you have something to say, and it's, it's going to bless us. It's going to bless this generation. And so you have been a blessing. Thank you for doing this for me. She was kind of, you know, nervous about it. But I'm telling you, Sister Annie, wasn't she a blessing to us? So we're going to go to the audience real quick. Our youth class had some questions that they wanted to ask our mothers. And so we're going to ask Sister Donisha. We're going to do this for maybe five minutes. And then I don't want to hold you because I, I know you want to celebrate with your um, families. So they had a couple of questions they wanted to ask. Okay, so here's... And this is for anybody in the, in in the, the audience. audience, yes. So if you were to raise a child during this time, like this time frame, what would be the most challenging? Technology, their friends, social activities, what would be most challenging and why? Yes. Somebody always said all of them. <laughs> hey, man, do we have anybody out here that want to answer that for us? Yes. This is fair. All right. Watch Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise I would Lord. say technology and um, peer pressure. Mm -hmm. um, trying to instill in your kids to do what they're supposed to do, the right thing, raise them up in the church, because you have the, what I would say, children that don't believe in that and they think their way is the right way. Um, 
trying to make things easy and fast, good and fun. But I think technology has really taken over mm -hmm. our youth. And they believe so much in what they read on the different websites, right. but they need to go back home and listen to what their parents say. That's right. Or someone older in their home, or just read a book, get, uh, do some things that are just going to bring some kind of um, wealth to your life. That's right. So that's what I feel in this day and age. It's really, really hard. But we have, I would say, in this church, we have some great youth. I love being yes. in this church. So I because, and I applaud the parents of these youth, because it is so much out there. And when I go to different places and I listen to the kids, even when I go up to the school and I hear the kids walking down the street, I'm like, oh my God, who is your parent? Mm -hmm. You know, um, because of the words that come out of their mouth, they don't know this. So I say with kids, mothers, fathers, aunties, uncles, anyone, stick with your children. Stick with your young youth so they can know that there's something better out there than making a fast buck, not getting an education, or, uh, well, I ain't got to do this and I don't have to do this. Just instill that in our, in our youth because they are the future. So we have to stick with our youth from 12 on up. That's right. Amen. That's good. That's my mama. <laughs> She's so wise and free. <laughs> she got a beautiful daughter, too. <laughs> Two beautiful daughters. Two beautiful. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and so here's another question that one of our youth has. What is the most important lesson that your mom taught you? Let's get somebody over here. Let's see. An important lesson that your mom taught you. Okay. Sister Nicole. One important, uh, praise Lord, everybody. Praise One Lord. important lesson that my mom taught us is to always respect ourselves. And no matter where you are, you never know who knows my mama, <laughs> my daddy, my my grandparents. You no, know, you never know because you know. So always respect yourself because when you respect yourself, that reflects back on. Your family. That's right. So that's what we want to talk about. That's good. We'll get Sister Muddy over here, then we're going to come back over here to this sister. Okay. This is Praise the Lord. One of the important things my mother taught me was how to be a lady. Yes. Because we live in a time where society seeks to destroy that divide of male and female. That's right. And so my mama taught me how important it was to be ladylike, to be dainty, to be feminine. Yes. And that that wasn't a bad thing. That girlish thing was a good thing. And that was the qualities that were God-given qualities. Right. And whatever man is doing today to, to destroy that, that's against God. So she taught me how to be a lady. That's right. That's right. That's good. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Um, one thing that my mom always taught me was to don't look at the scoreboard, just run the race. Right. Um, there are a lot of times, a lot of opportunities that we may be blessed with um, that may fall into our lap, but we may run from them because we may think, oh, this is just going to take too long, or how long does it take? But when you get into it and you you step into your purpose before you know before you know it you've inspired others and you've come a mighty long way so that's one thing I always say don't look at the scoreboard just run the race thank you one more question um, what financial advice would you give a young woman who is starting out by herself that's good Uh, I would give um, the financial advice to, uh, to start budgeting mm -hmm. and saving. Mm -hmm. Don't be a consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that my mom taught me about money 
is that you can make a lot of money, but you don't. But sometimes more money is not always um, a good thing. And and not only that, it's what you do with what you make. And I remember telling my daughters a lot of times, because I talk about money saving, my mom uh, was self-employed, but she always, she was, she was kind of, she, she wasn't materialistic at all. Yes, I don't know what happened to me, but uh, she, <laughs> I'm not, but you know what I'm saying. She's not, she wasn't, um, she wasn't, she didn't, she wasn't, you couldn't tell that she she looked good wherever she went, but she she never was a, a she was a miser with her money, and uh, and I learned that I learned from, I learned from her also, and she, I watched my mom tithe. She don't even know if my mom is deceased, but I watched her tithe. Um, I would put her clothes up and do things, and she would it, she was a cosmetologist. And every week, I would put her money up and work, clean up her room, and it would always just end up. And I didn't know what it was, what it was, because my mom didn't encourage us to go to church. And she went because she didn't go because she didn't encourage us because my mom went to BTU and all that to say we're Baptist. But she taught me just by what I saw mm -hmm. to tie. My mom had money, and she didn't make a lot, but she was up. So I would say. Time. Be a good steward over everything you do. Budget your money and stop spending on things you don't need. Set a monument, but give God first. That's good. That's good. I want to say about money is allocation. Don't spend more than you have and then save for what you want. You don't need credit cards, you don't need all that because God is going to give it to you in your due time. So just don't go out here and try to put yourself out here and take your money and just waste it on things that you know you can't see a need for. So always look for a need and look for allocation to pay for it. That's good to have an allocation. <laughs> We're going to keep moving because I know everybody, uh, did we have anybody else? I'm sorry, I don't want to overlook. Okay. Um, also, our youth class, um, they had, they did some video presentations for their, for their mothers, and uh, we weren't able to play them today, but some did want to have something to say. So we're going to get those youth real quick to um, talk about their mothers. Most of them sit right here. <laughs> We'll, we'll take it to two minutes, uh, a minute. Okay. Um, I just wanted, my mom's right here. Um, I just wanted to thank her for everything she's been seeing me growing up. Um, she taught me how to love myself and respect myself at all times. And she just taught me how to be a woman. And she's still teaching me. And she's helping me be who I am today. So I just want to thank you. Amen. <laughs> All the time she takes out of her own to be there for us and provide for us. Just thank you, love you. Aww. Aww. Um, I just want to say thank you to my mom. She's very loving and very kind. Um, she taught me how to love myself. She taught me how to be a lady. She taught me how to carry a purse, even though I don't carry one, but she taught me how to carry one. Um, she taught me how to cook mine, I don't cook mine. And um, my mom is not only my mother, but she's my best friend. Aww. Well, thank you for the coupon, ladies. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I don't. She's back there. There she is. Um, I just want to um, tell you that I appreciate everything you do for me and Justin, um, not only us, but for others around you. You do a lot at home, you do a lot at church, you do a lot on your job. <laughs> so I appreciate 
everything um, that you do for us. Um, and as I grow up, I can see you and myself, and I'm glad that I can say that that's a good thing because not everybody can say that about their mom. Wow. And um, yesterday when we were in the car, you were talking to me and Jessica, telling us how you appreciate us and everything that we do. Um, and you said that you were not disappointed in us or you don't have any disappointment. So today, I want to tell you that I'm not disappointed in anything that you've done. You do an outstanding job as a mom and I love you. Wow. Um, brother Ned, Brother Jawan, who want to go first? Okay, here you go, Brother Ned. <laughs> Mama, <laughs> I love you, I appreciate you. The main thing that I think is, uh, you know, perfect example for a woman, I'd say. You showed me what to look for in a woman. Wow. So, wow. I say I love you, and I thank you. She's going to get it to me. 
And she showed me right from wrong. She showed me how to know my worth because at times being a parent may feel like you don't know your value, but your mom will show you your value in everything she does. And I love my mom for everything she does for me. Is there any way we're going to give you a quick way? And we want to see Sister Tammy, everybody. Sister Tammy, wave your hand. That's good. Man. Then we have one more back here, Joel. Uh, my mom's over there. Uh, uh, I just love you. You mean a lot to me. But I can't thank you. I have to thank my second mom, Mama D. Because she's like a second mom to me. She's always there for me. And uh, I just love both of you equally. <laughs> no big ass, I'm looking at you. Oh, just one. Oh, right. Okay, hi everybody. Um, this is my mom. I just want to say, my you know, my mom, she did it by herself. She raised four kids by her God, but by herself. But um, this is my best friend. She's the stuff she does to me, I'm like, wow. I never knew someone could love me like this. I never knew someone of flesh to love me like this. She sacrificed so much just to raise her kids and make sure that we didn't have to go without. She's a phenomenal woman and you deserve everything that has come to you in the past few years. And I love you. Growing up, I was my mom's shadow. Like, I never go anywhere without her. <laughs> and um, mama, Sacrifices that she's made for me. 
the things that she's gonna get herself to do for me. You protect me when I don't even see it. You love me more than I love myself. And I'm sorry that every time I've disappointed you, but I'm gonna make you proud. I'm gonna do this for you and for myself. I have the best mother. I know everybody thinks that mom, but I got the best. My mom has done outstanding when it comes to all four of us. And yes, we got some bumps in the roads, but God has done it. He's protected us. I love you so much, and my mama did not love you. You are the greatest. You are our backbone. You have kept us. You kept me. You taught me how to pray, and I did not use praying until I left my mom's house and went to school as much. I've come in contact with so much stuff in school.